The evolution of elephants is fascinating. Scientists have traced their earliest ancestors back to a tiny animal, weighing just a few grams, which eventually evolved into the largest land animal alive today. But how did they evolve from small shrew-like creatures into the largest land mammal on modern-day Earth? If we travel back 180 million years, we can see the development of early mammals. They evolved from a reptile-like lineage around the same time as true dinosaurs did. As dinosaurs began to dominate the Earth, mammals continued to diversify and develop. Starting as tiny creatures, they were evolving quickly. About 80 million years ago, the branch of mammals that went on to become elephants split from the branch that went on to become primates. At this split, scientists have found the closest common ancestor of elephants and humans to be the tree shrew. Elephants belong to the mammalian order, Proboscidea. The Proboscideans are characterized by a long nose or trunk and often unusual dentition. The proboscides emerged about 60 million years ago with the arrival of Moeratheriums. This was the size of a large pig, but behaved a bit like a pygmy hippo. It was a semi-aquatic mammal with a flexible upper lip, not unlike that of modern-day tapers. It could use this extended lip to grasp vegetation to feed on. It also developed small tusks. These tusks could be used for rooting around in the soil. Although they only stood a couple of feet high at the shoulder, these early proboscides lived in North Africa and gave rise to larger, more elephant-like mammals. Throughout evolutionary history, elephant ancestors developed weird and wonderful adaptations to survive in their environment. The elephant lineage favored longer limbs and greater body size. Their enormous body size was in part due to the competition across Africa's grasslands. Smaller mammals needed to eat higher quality forage, but animals with a larger body size had slower metabolic rates and were therefore able to eat lower quality forage. This vegetation was available all year round, unlike the fresh shoots and leaves other herbivores relied on. The early elephantids were even able to digest things like tree bark. Growing to enormous sizes allowed the elephant to eat all year round and also gave them an advantage against fearsome predators. As the elephants grew taller, their trunks grew longer. To cope with their heads being higher off the ground, their noses became longer and developed into an incredibly dexterous trunk. This enabled the animals to feed from the ground without lowering their heads and placing them in a vulnerable position. They were able to keep their heads up whilst feeding and drinking, scanning the surroundings, and using their ears to listen to approaching predators. The trunk became so useful for the elephant's survival. It is strong enough to rip a tree out of the ground, yet nimble enough to pick up a single grain of rice. Further unique adaptations include the tusks. Tusks evolved in early mammals, offering a range of uses from fighting and defense to digging for food and showing off in powerful displays. Today, tusks are found not only in elephants, but also in some deer, pigs, walruses, and narwhals. Tusks are, in fact, elongated teeth. To be more precise, they are elongated canine teeth. The development of them came when the teeth began to attach to soft tissue rather than bone, and when enamel no longer coated the entire tooth. This enabled the tooth, or tusk, to grow continuously. This was a useful tool for an animal who didn't have the ability to replace their teeth in the same way that sharks and some reptiles can. Elephants also have another adaptation that they have developed to help them communicate. They have the ability to communicate in infrasound. They make deep rumbles that can travel as far as 10 kilometers. These low-frequency sounds are undetectable to many predators, enabling elephants to communicate with one another without detection. They can also sense seismic vibrations through the fat pads in their feet. This allows them to communicate through the ground, reaching distances of up to 30 kilometers away. As the physical adaptations of their ancestors become more prominent, the earlier proboscides began to evolve into more elephant-looking animals. Not only had they increased dramatically in size, but they had developed exceptionally long noses, and many also displayed tusks. One elephant-like ancestor included the Gomphotheres, which roamed Eurasia, Africa, 
and North America from about 20 million years ago. Similar in size to today's Asian elephants, Gomphotheres had four tusks, two on the bottom jaw and two on the top. They also had short trunks and shovel-like mouths. Another proboscide with an elongated, shovel-like mouth was the Platybelodon, which lived during the Miocene. This animal had two huge flat teeth at the end of its bottom jaw. Amazingly, although the Platybelodon was only about six feet tall, it weighed as much as a modern-day elephant. Dinotherium was also an ancestor of the elephants. Instead of having tusks that descended from the upper jaw like today's elephants, it had two downwards-facing tusks on its lower jaw. It is thought that these tusks were used to scoop out vegetation from swamps. Mastodons, with their hairy bodies, were most prominent in North and Central America from 25 million years ago, but were thought to have originated in Africa and Eurasia. They lived in herds, mostly inhabiting forests and woodlands. They were browsing animals that became extinct along with many of the other megafauna towards the end of the Pleistocene, about 10,000 years ago. Perhaps the most famous of the Ice Age animals was the mammoth. During the Pliocene, about 5 million years ago, mammoths and Asian elephants began to make an appearance. Although mammoths were once common as far west as America, they originated in Africa before spreading northwards into Eurasia and then migrating further into North America about one and a half million years ago. Asian elephants spread out into Eurasia from Africa at a similar time to mammoths. In fact, today's Asian elephants are more closely related to the extinct mammoth than they are to African elephants. Although these elephants once inhabited large swaths of Eurasia, they are now only found in India, Sri Lanka, China, Bangladesh, and Southeast Asia. The Indian subspecies Elephus maximus indicus resides on the Indian subcontinent, whilst Elephus maximus sumatranus is found in Sumatra and Elephus maximus maximus in Sri Lanka. These subspecies differ slightly in size and skin pigmentation. In terms of evolution, African elephants are the newest elephants on Earth. They came into existence about 1.5 million years ago. They once covered the whole of the African continent, but today they only inhabit sub-Saharan Africa. This has been largely due to extensive hunting for the ivory trade, as well as habitat loss. There are two species of the African elephant, the savanna or bush elephant, Loxodonta africana, which is the largest species on the planet, and the slightly smaller forest elephant, Loxodonta cyclades. Over the course of evolutionary history, there are thought to have been around 352 species of proboscideans. Fossil remains have been found all over the world except for Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica. All but the African and Asian elephants have now died out. There was a time when the proboscideans occupied a variety of habitats and geographical locations, but their characteristics and adaptations that once set them apart from other mammals and gave them a distinct advantage over other herbivores may have led to their downfall. Some of the elephant's giant ancestors were unable to adapt to changing conditions. The challenges of a changing climate and the spread of man contributed to the demise of the woolly mammoth, the gomphotheres, and the mastodons. Tracing the elephant's evolution back through the millennia, we can see the varied ancestors that paved the way for today's greatest land mammals. Biological evidence suggests that manatees, dugongs, and hyrexes are the closest living relatives to modern elephants. This is truly remarkable if you take the time to consider the huge range of morphologies and habitats between each of these species. The elephant evolutionary tree is a complex one, though one that is as fascinating as it is perplexing. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.